Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the Kano model. Imagine this scenario. You're the product manager for a software tool and you're trying to determine what features to build next quarter. Now, you have a huge list of features you'd like to build, but you don't have the time or budget to build all of them. So you need to decide what features you're going to prioritize, but how? Well, one option might be to get your team together to brainstorm ideas. Another might be to survey what's important to your customers. Now, these two approaches will obviously generate you lots of options and ideas, but alongside this and making things even more complicated is the fact that not all customers are equal and many customers may not even be able to articulate or know what they want. So the big question then for you as a product manager is how do you decipher all of this into something you can use? Well, this is where the Kano model comes in. It helps you prioritize a feature based on how much that feature will delight your customers. Now, putting your customers front and center in this way gives your product the best chance of being successful in the market. The model was developed by Dr. Noriaki Kano, a professor of quality management from Tokyo University in the 1980s. The Kano model works by understanding each feature you want to develop based on two axes. On the X axis, we have whether the feature is absent or present within your product or service. And on the Y axis, we have how you expect the customer to respond to the feature, whether they are dissatisfied or delighted by the feature. Now, the next thing the model does is to break this diagram into categories of features, and these are represented by the lines you can see on the diagram. So we have must have features, performance features, delight or delighter features, indifferent features, and reverse features. Let's dig a little deeper into each of these types of features. So firstly, must have features. Now, these are the features that customers expect as part of a product or service. They represent your customer's basic requirements. If they are present, your customer won't be delighted in any way, they'll be neutral to them. But if even one must have feature is absent, then your customer will be very dissatisfied. So as an example, imagine arriving at a hotel room and locking the door behind you as you enter. If you lock the door successfully, then you don't really even think about it. It's just what you expect. But if you arrived to find your room had no door lock, you'd be absolutely horrified and dissatisfied. So put simply, your product or service must have all of the must have features or your customer will be very dissatisfied. However, having all of those features will not delight your customer. And you can see this on the diagram because the red must have line never goes above the horizontal axis. So next we have performance features. Now, the more a customer gets of these features, the more satisfied they will be. They're called performance features because they're considered to improve the performance of your product in some way. Performance features have qualities like cost, entertainment, ease of use or security. These are the types of features that customers appraise when assessing whether a product suits their needs. These features result in satisfaction if present and a little bit less satisfaction when they're not present. Now, the straight orange performance line you can see here on the diagram shows that for every increase in functionality, there is a proportional increase in satisfaction. So returning to our hotel example, performance features might include such things as a bigger bed, a bigger TV, or triple glazing to remove outside noise. Now, next we have delight or delighter features. And these are features that your customer doesn't expect, but they make your customer delighted if they are present. Now, delight features are represented by the yellow line on the diagram. And if these features are absent, then your customer is completely neutral. Um, so with meaning the line never goes below the x-axis, really they're not expecting the feature at all. So why would it go below the x-axis? Because it doesn't make them dissatisfied. But if the feature is present, then the customer is extremely happy. And that's why you can see the steep curve here. So for our hotel example, 
This might mean getting a room upgrade when you check in or finding some champagne and flowers in your room upon your arrival. Now, next we have indifferent features, and these are represented by the green line that runs along the X axis here. And indifferent features are ones that the customer just doesn't care about. Whether they're present or absent, your customer just doesn't care. In our hotel example, that might be something like having a rug in your room. If it's absent, maybe you don't even notice you don't have one. And if it's present, you don't really notice it either. Now, finally, we have reverse features. And these are features that actually annoy your customer if they're present, but make your customer happy when they're not there. And for that reason, this line is running in the opposite direction to the performance line. Now, returning for a final time to our hotel example, when you visit the hotel restaurant for breakfast, then having to queue before you can be seated is annoying. Far better would be to simply be able to walk in and select your own table. The server could then ask any questions they have after you have sat down. Now, there is an extra dimension of features, and that's something called habituation. And this is about how your customer feels about a feature can change over time as the customer becomes more habituated to that feature. And that's called the habituation effect. Now, the lighting features can become performance features and eventually must have features. So one more time back to our hotel example. In the 1960s, your customer might have been delighted to find a TV in their hotel room. In the 70s, having a TV maybe was a performance feature, but these days it's simply considered a must have requirement. So now you understand the theory of the Kano model, how do you actually use it? Well, here's a five step process you can use. And it starts by selecting the features you want to consider, then surveying your customers in the Kano way, then categorizing each answer according to a table, which I'll show you in a moment. Fourth, you collate your data, and finally you prioritize the features you will deliver. So let's start by looking at step one select the features to consider. So here you simply create a list of all the features you have under consideration to implement. And that list could come from many sources. So maybe your backlog, maybe requests from customers, maybe management or team brainstorming. The second step is to ask your customers how they feel about each of the features you've identified in a standardized way using two questions. So the first question is asked in a positive way called the functional way. And that means you ask your customer how they would feel if the product had that feature. And the second question is asked in a negative way called the dysfunctional way. And that means you ask the customer how they would feel if the product did not have this feature. And you can see those two questions on the image here. And then your customer can answer each question using one of these five ways. So maybe they like the feature if it's present, maybe they dislike it if it's not present, for example. Next, we go to step three, categorize each answer. So based on the answer given to you by one customer for a feature, you can identify how they view that feature using this table. Now, to use the table, you take the customer's answer to your functional question and their answer to your dysfunctional question, and you reference using the table to work out how the customer feels. So, for example, if you asked your functional question and your customer expected the feature to be present, and at the same time they dislike it if it wasn't present, then you end up here, and that's a must-have feature according to the table. Now, conversely, if, you're, if you had another feature and your customer would like the feature to be present, so we're here, but they could tolerate the feature if it wasn't there, then we have a delighter feature, one that's going to delight them, but they don't expect it. Now, note that there's one category in this table that we haven't covered so far questionable 
features. And these are simply features that you cannot determine a category for as your customer has given conflicting answers. Now, step four is to collate your data. So based on the answers provided by all customers surveyed, you'll be able to understand how they as a unit view the features you have under consideration. So for example, suppose you're considering implementing five features and you surveyed 10 customers, your data might look something like you see here. So you can see feature one, seven people you survey think it's a delighter feature, three think it's performance. And conversely, feature five, eight people are indifferent to, but feature four here, 10 people feel it's a must have. So the final step is based on this, you prioritize the feature you'll deliver. And the way to do this begins with committing to deliver the must have features. Your customer expects to see these and they'll be disappointed if they're not present. So you have no real choice, but you have to build them and build them first. The next step is to take a look at your performance features and try to include as many as you can. Next, try to include features that will add delight. Now, if necessary, you can cut out some of your performance features so that you can include some delighters. So from our example on the previous table, that would mean scheduling features two and one next time permitting. And the final thing to do is remove any reverse features if you have any. Finally, all indifferent features can be ignored as they deliver no value to your customer. So that's it. In summary, the Kano model is a unique way of prioritizing new features that puts customers at the heart of product and service development. It puts customers front and center of your prioritization process. It's going to enable you to prioritize features based on customer satisfaction. And over the medium to long term, this can help the perceived quality of your product improve at the highest rate possible. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.